Several brands have their crossovers and then they have their SUVs. Like Toyota's got the 4Runner, different than the Highlander. You've got the Bronco, you've got the Wrangler. Honda has their Passport, which is still more crossover oriented. And Nissan gives us the Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition. This is the most rugged Nissan crossover SUV you can get. So with this 2024 Rock Creek Pathfinder, we're gonna take a look at the exterior, the interior, and get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get started. Now let's take a look at the exterior details of this Rock Creek version of the Pathfinder. So you've got several different trim levels, but this Rock Creek Edition is kind of in the middle. And starting right up front, Nissan's gonna give us LED headlights as standard, even though we have an incandescent turn signal. Got this black V-Motion grille. You'll also get LED fog lights down there as well. That's something that is typically reserved for the higher trim, so it's nice to see that on this Rock Creek Edition. And just look at this. I mean, it just looks a little bit more rugged than your typical SUV. Now, obviously paint can vary, but Nissan in a lot of their vehicles gives you like this kind of separated roof, a floating roof design. You get a little bit of that with this Pathfinder with that space there. I showed you a white Rock Creek Edition before, so be sure to check that out. But take a look at this. So you got the Rock Creek badge right there and a couple things here, slick tires, wheels, even some the beadlock design on here. It looks pretty interesting. So we've got all terrain wheels right here and a beadlock style or all terrain tires and a beadlock style wheel. It's 18 inches, so you've got thicker rubber and they're wider than before as well. Another thing is you've got this plastic down here, this molding at the bottom and around the wheel wells. So getting scratches isn't gonna be as big of a problem if you scrape something on the bottom, not nearly as concerning. Now, dimensionally, it's about 198 inches long, so it's kind of on the shorter end, honestly, compared to some of the bigger three-row crossovers and three-row SUVs, but still fairly spacious on the inside. Now, Nissan also gives us this elevated um, roof rack. This is pretty cool up here. It's really big and bulky. It's tubular, and it can handle 220 pounds up there. The Rock Creek also adds a 5 8 inch suspension lift with an off-road tuned suspension. So something else that differentiates this from the rest. It does say four-wheel drive. However, we're more of an all-wheel drive setup here. Now coming to the back, Nissan actually gives us a manual lift gate back here. I like that. One less thing to worry about and break. A power lift gate's available on the upper trims and even a motion activated one on the top trim. Behind the third row right here, so kind of nice you actually get this little rock creek um, cargo cover back here but you get about 16 cubic feet with this you've got a couple of tie downs one on each side you also have this pull out hook on each side which seems pretty sturdy and pretty durable you can sling your seat belts right in there so they don't rattle around underneath of this we get more storage space down here so this is nice you can throw some dirty stuff back here because it's all plastic. You don't have to worry about the carpet. And then under the vehicle is where you'll find the spare tire. Now, I would typically think that you'd pull the strap, it would release and then go forward, but you actually got to pull this handle, let it down. You can pull it back up with the strap. And then there we go, boom. I've got all the seats down. And Nissan does give you a good amount of space. You've got about 80 cubic feet of space. Some vehicles give you more, but this is still a pretty darn good amount. And we've got bench or uh, bucket seats in the middle. So you actually have a divider in the middle instead of just a bench. I kind of expected a bench maybe, but uh, that's just what we get. And I was able to fit a couple of adult sized bikes in the back, no problem. And Nissan actually does specify that this is wide enough to be able to fit four foot wide sheets. So if you got some drywall, some sheetrock to haul around, you can do it. Now, Nissan still gives us the smart key system on this Rock Creek model. It also comes with remote start. It's a very slim key fob, I like it for the most part. Now the way the smart key system works is these three lines, these three lines you push to lock it or you've got a sensor in the back to unlock it. And then as we hop in our seats for the Rock Creek model right here, we've got this contrast stitching, the Rock Creek banding branding coming along here. And Nissan generally has comfortable seats. These are no different. They're very comfortable. These bolsters are actually fairly large right here. I like that. Comfortable cloth material in the middle, comfortable bolstering down here as well. And your typical adjustments for height, tilt, and power lumbar support. The steering wheel is manual tilt and telescoping. And I've had no 
trouble getting it in a position that I like. <clears throat> On this Rock Creek model, our seats are gonna be heated with that. No heated steering wheel or ventilated seats or memory settings on this particular model. Now climbing into the back seat, one thing you won't get compared to the upper trims is a sunshade, but look at these two giant cup holders right here. That's kind of cool. You even have space down there as well. And it's a fairly spacious back seat. Now sitting behind where I normally like to sit, I'm five foot nine. This is where I would typically have the seat. I've got good knee space, good foot space. We even have our own automatic climate control right here. You can control your temperature and your fan speed, have it on an auto setting. And then you've got a USB-C, USB-A charging port, and it's totally flat in the middle. Even though we have all wheel drive here, that's fantastic. The center console is really unique too. So you've got a big bin right here. You've got a couple of cup holders. They're really big, but so, sorry, totally missing the mark there. They're really large cup holders, but surprisingly there's no like rings or anything that keeps it in place. Since you don't have an armrest there, we have this folding armrest here. It's not the ratcheting kind, it just sits right there. The air conditioning vents and the lights are right up overhead right here. Your old blank handles are right there as well. No moonroof in this particular model where you can see out from the back seat, but look at that. The third row even has uh, AC vents as well. These seats can scoot forward. So even in its furthest forward position, I can sit here without my knees pushing into it. It is tight, but that gives the third row more room and this can recline quite a bit. So this can be a very comfortable back seat. We'll check out the third row. Before we move back, this is also a removable center console, so you can completely just get rid of it if you want. There's a little handle under here to where you can take that, pop it out, and completely remove it and be able to put it back easily. Now for the third row, check this out. First of all, you know, with that center console there, you could still climb around to fold this seat. Boom, you can just do that. Just pull this first handle, or you've got this handy little button and boom, seat will automatically kick up and out of the way and look at all of this entry space. Now I left the seat in the furthest back position. I cannot sit here without my knees touching, but as you saw, I could sit up there with the seat all the way forward, which would give me enough room. It's still flat in the middle right here and a little bit of space, even with that center console there. In the back, you get a couple of cup holders on both sides and an air conditioning vent on both sides. And your light is the cargo light back there. Both front and back, I can sit up tall, or both front, middle, and back, I can sit up tall without my head touching. And this third row can recline a little bit as well. There we go. That's pretty good. You definitely impede on the cargo space, but at least you can do that. It's an option, so that is really nice. We got push button start. Go ahead and start it up right there. Nissan gives us some steering wheel specific controls. You're a you know, driver assist feature controls are here. You press that to start it. You can turn on your cruise, adjust your distance right there. The lane centering technology is by pushing this steering wheel button right there. Now over on the door, we've got soft material and more contrast stitching here. A big padded soft armrest. It's very comfortable to be in this driver's seat. Nice big grab handle kind of a height limited bottle holder, but decent storage. So in the middle with this center console, first of all, it's very, very similar to what you see in other Nissan systems. So you've got several different pages that you can toggle through, different information that you can see on here as well trip computer stuff, all of that is nice to be able to see. Now moving over, Nissan gives us an eight inch touchscreen with physical control. So as you know, I always like to see my physical controls. As you can see the layout here, volume knob, tuning knob, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on here, but it is not wireless. You do have to be plugged in. Now you can just quickly go back to the Nissan menu here and everything is very similar. It's not super modern Nissan. It's similar to what we've seen in other vehicles, but you do still have the touchscreen option on there as well. Easy to control your brightness on here. You can quickly access your camera as well. And Nissan thankfully even gives us a surround view camera. Press it again and you can see right next to one of your tires. Could definitely come in handy in parking or even off-roading situations as well. And if you go into reverse with our really unique shifter here, that camera is automatically going to pop up. Coming down from there, we have dual zone climate control, easy layout. Everything here is 
physically controlled. There's no touch screens on here. I like that. You can see all of the controls right out in front of you. And you can even control your rear climate or lock it so your kids aren't messing with it all from the front seat here. Down from there, USB-C, USB-A, 12 volt power outlet. This is not a wireless charging pad in this one, but it is a nice textured rubber mat. The shifter's interesting, so you just push and then move it whatever direction it shows to park, you just press the P. There's an extra little storage slot right up there. Cup holders are good size and accommodate pretty much everything. Electronic parking brake, auto stop start, and your brake hold button all in a close spot right here. And then this is your drive mode dial. You spin it, let me show you what you got. You press it for your downhill assist, unpress it for that. So this is normal mode. Turn the dial, we've got eco, you've got sport, we have a towing mode. If we go back the other way, you can see you've got sport mode, blind spot monitor, or your snow mode, blind spot monitoring will not be available. And then sand, mud and rut there as well. The center armrest right here is pretty large. You've got this Rock Creek branding pathfinder. Open it up if you've got a big area right here for storage, nothing too special, no plugs either. But one cool thing is right below this nice material in the dash, you have this little shelf. It's slanted down so stuff could easily like fall out, but it is rubberized and there is a little ledge right there to hopefully catch some things. This is also a locking glove box. I love to see that. Soft opening right here, kind of average size on the small side. Up up here, you've got a manual flipping rear view mirror right there. You still get a sunglass holder up here. Now inside, you just get your regular interior lighting. And then the whole visor slides, which is nice to see as well. And like I showed you, no, no uh, moonroof or sunroof or anything, but it is a kind of a boxier shape overall and you've got good large windows to see out the back. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Rock Creek Pathfinder and there's one big, two big differences with this Rock Creek version. It gets more power and it tows quite a bit more too. Towing is up to 6,000 pounds with this one. That's a hefty amount and uh, pretty awesome. Now, powertrain right here, same as it was before when I showed you the Rock Creek, you get the direct injected VQ 3.5 liter V6 with 295 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque with premium fuel. So you can get more power out of this Rock Creek model. Still comes with the standard nine-speed transmission and MPG is definitely lower, probably from a little bit of different ride, the tires overall up to 23 on the highway. So most Pathfinders come standard with front wheel drive. This comes with their intelligent four wheel drive as they call it. So you've got that as an option here. You've got the different drive modes down here as well. And the Pathfinder is a comfortable driving vehicle. The seats are comfortable. The acceleration is smooth. It's not a turbo, so you don't have that punchy aspect about it. It just feels pretty refined. And while we come to a stop, let's quickly talk about driver assist features. So you've got adaptive cruise control, you've got late centering and the lane keeping system. You've got a blind spot monitor in there as well. Automatic emergency braking. Ergonomics is good in here too. I've been comfortable. You've got a couple separate storage spaces here. This center display is easy to see. Unlike the Rogue that I showed you just recently that has a massive display, that's still pretty nice. Decent size display there. It is larger on the upper trims though. Now getting it out on the road, acceleration is good. It's been so long since I drove the non-Rock Creek version to really know how much difference there is between the power outputs. But decent power output, decent torque output overall. Not the same as some of the turbocharged competitors, but this is still respectable and good enough. And I like the smooth aspect of a naturally aspirated engine. The Pathfinder is somewhat quiet. This is kind of an exceptional road because it's very rough textured, but we get laminated glass on the side right there. The steering is rather relaxed for the most part. You don't have a ton of feedback in here and it's not a hefty steering wheel either. It's, it's more relaxed than say the Nissan Frontier, that's for sure. A um, little bit of play in it. big bump right there but for the most part Pathfinder is a quiet or a comfortable ride too you've got 
an, an off-road tuned suspension with this model so keep that in mind but let's go ahead and put the pedal down okay so it took a little while for us to get moving a little downshift on that and then a buildup of power unlike turbocharged engines where you get power pretty quickly but I still like the fact that it is naturally aspirated I'm gonna shift us into sport mode here move the dial over to the flag which is sport mode pedal down and right away you could tell the difference and this does not have the CBT transmission that many Nissan vehicles do it is the nine-speed automatic and it's pretty responsive for the most part obviously a little delay at the downshift back there but for the most part down uh, day to day it'll downshift quickly getting through town works well power output is good if we're not talking about power we're just talking about day-to-day -day driving characteristics comfort is good ride quality is pretty good it's not a standout in any particular category I wouldn't say other than the fact that it can tow 6,000 pounds as like a mid-size crossover that is very good but everything else is pretty average but it's perfectly perfectly fine in many many aspects and I think a lot of you even if you don't get this to be a rugged type of vehicle you just kind of like the looks of it the uh, all-terrain tires the big roof rack if you just get it for different factors it's a nice day-to-day driver for a family vehicle it's spacious so to wrap things up on this 2024 pathfinder rock creek i like the updates they gave you you've got a lot of towing capacity with this you've got some rugged tires a little bit of a lift the big rack on top you've definitely got more rugged capability with this rock creek edition and still the same comfort orientation that you get on the inside like you get with the regular Pathfinder. So that's a big difference between some of the full-on body-on-frame type SUVs or the more rugged type of SUVs like a Wrangler or a Bronco in particular, totally different category. But Nissan still offers that similar kind of rugged capability with this Rock Creek Edition and all the comfort that you get with the regular crossover. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.